What up guys? It's weekend, we got the new fusion, nobody super excited about it I guess, but um, I'm going for it. Many people have been asking if I'm doing it or no. There you go. I always have the same answer that I go for all of the fusions just in case I uh, get dupes and can use them for faction guardians because I don't have most of them maxed out. I think I'm still gonna end up using him in Hydra, but I'm not really trying to be the best Hydra Slayer in the game and I wanna auto my keys, so it's not gonna be that big deal, but we did a poll on the last stream and I, I don't recall exactly how many votes we got, but it was a good amount, maybe like a couple hundred votes and 48% are going for the fusion, so that means that most people watching my content are not actually doing it, so I think it says a little bit about the fusion. I, I said it on the stream too, but oh, we're against the clan, mate. I think that the fusion should be a little bit easier, and of course everybody wants them to be easier, but it's a weird thing that it's kind of optional content. In other games, fusions are the type of thing that everybody always goes for them, and they're always worth doing, and Raid really doesn't do it that way. It's so, such a big effort and commitment to do it, and you might not even get it if you commit to it, that half of the people are always keeping out on them. But enough of that, let's focus on the battles. He's opening with the Sifi. I feel like this is the same guy that always does it, that he opens without Armands, but if I don't pick Armands, then he's still gonna pick it afterwards. But yeah, I'm doing the fusion, I'm not really tryharding it, I'm trying to do all of the events as uh, low effort and chill as I can. But the dungeon divers and shard pool events are definitely painful. The other ones are okay, if it's like a dragon tournament or whatever, those are fine. It's the other ones that are the issue. Um, this is weird. I often see these type of speed teams, but honestly nowadays they never really use Arbiter. Usually it's like with uh, Chu, Chen or Mikage, there's many other options. They don't usually go with both Arbiter and Sifi, at most they have one of them. Mm. I guess yeah, I guess we're just gonna go with the Trident to Rotos and UDK. UDK can be pretty good against Sifi of course, but often these teams will pull out Georgit and it would be good against Georgit. Let's see. Okay, he did pick it and he went with both Mikake and Georgit, so fair enough, but you know, he already has two ally attacks on the team and two turn meter boosts and three revivers. I feel like the Arbiter is kind of not actually needed in his team. He could have gone with pretty much any other support, I feel. But of course it depends what he has, so he probably doesn't have Shu Chen if we went with Arbiter, but he could have gone with like, let's say, even Eostrid, who was a fusion. He already has double reviver anyway. Who do we want to ban? Mm, I'm almost feeling Lazarus ban. L let's go with this. What? He didn't. But he does have the charge. It. I'm sure it's gonna go before my armaments with double turn meter boost. But he doesn't have a lockout. So if my armaments doesn't die before it gets a turn, then you know it's not gonna be a hard battle for me. But I'm sure he's fast enough that it's. His nuker is gonna go before my armaments, I guess. Maybe if I banned one of the turn meter boosters instead, that might have been been better now that I think about it afterwards. Yeah, okay. He still yeah, he still went first. I I knew it. Okay. Started out strong, I don't think we can do it now. I can certainly kill like, you know, 
two champions now. But uh, I can't kill George it without the A3. And George is just gonna kill us with the A1, but I think Yeah, I think we're still gonna go for the CV kill. If I don't kill the CV Oh, I, I couldn't even kill the CV. Damn. That was without the mastery proc. Even if I didn't kill the CV and I just killed the George and the Arbiter, CV will just A1 me down anyway, so. Hmm. I feel like that could have I mean that the Helms Brasher procs were a kind of big deal there. If my Ankora could have easily died if he didn't proc the passive or um just the uh, the mastery or the passive, and then it would have been like not like easy win after that. But got destroyed very fast. But yeah, maybe I should have banned either Arbiter or Sifi in that case, but I just... I couldn't have predicted that he's not gonna ban the Armands, like... Normally everybody would ban it. I wish I had 4 piece stone skin on Staldus. It would be much better against these types of matchups, but I still kind of end up wanting to go with uh, Rotos <laughs> because he does have the stone skin. Okay, okay, we're just gonna do the same, same stuff. There's no way I'm not gonna pick UDK against the Siegfront. By the way, you probably heard... Oh, really? Interesting. Do I still want to ban the war light? Yeah, I, I guess we're just gonna do it anyway. Okay, that that was a good choice. He still has the Shu Chen, so he can make the secret go before my Armands, I'm sure. But, I mean, Armands is in stone skin, so if I have any nukers left, I think I'm good. But what I was gonna say is that you probably heard about the big CVC battle between GNL and IPR. And the funny thing is that we're gonna have a rematch of that. <laughs> Not the next week, but the week after that. On the, on the next CVC, it's gonna be GNL versus IPR again. And that might, like... You might be like, what? That's not possible. But you know, they have multiple clans and GNL got high points on their second clan that can now battle the IPR main clan again. So we're gonna have like a repeat of what happened this week. It's gonna be a weird event. Probably, probably there will be some other, um, you know, con content or raid threats and discussion about that. I I'm looking at Reddit right now. Are they still talking about the CVC or did they forget about it? But yeah, one thing that surprised me when I was talking with uh, Timo, who is the leader of IPR, is that they had never battled GNL before. Like, obviously, I mean, I, I, I literally asked about it and it's not, obviously, it's not a coincidence. How could they not battle each other in three years? But I guess it's often been like concentrated effort from both sides to avoid each other. And now, after three years of never facing each other, they're gonna do it two times in a row. It, it's a weird turn of events. I don't know if they were getting bored or what happened. I, in case you guys don't know, the way that you match up well, in Sieges we don't actually know how it works. In Hydra, I think it's based on the last, was it three or four Hydra battles, and not the last battle. CVC, you literally face the last enemy that, um, like, the enemy that was closest to your points in the last CVC. Not including, I think there's like, last three CVCs that you fought somebody. You can fight fight the same exact clan again, obviously you can 
by the second glance of um, of clusters. But because of that, it's you can't really manipulate your Hydra matchup super well, but it's super easy to manipulate CVC matchups, and that's why people make deals all the time and the big clans pay attention to their points at the end and try to go sometimes higher or lower on purpose in order to either not get matched up with another strong clan or if they want to snipe a specific clan they might do it <laughs> a famous example was you know when clan versus clan was released and announced uh, Gallifrey used to be one of the top clans during that time like uh, top 5 clans I would say maybe even top 3 but let's say Gallifrey was like top 5 clans in the game and Gla G G Gallifrey famously said that they're not gonna <laughs> compete in CVC and all of the other big clans were like getting massive hard ons and they were like fighting over who can snipe Gallifrey every clan was trying to snipe like I'm talking about the top clans they were trying to snipe Gallifrey in every CVC battle and they were literally having like uh, arguments in discord about <laughs> who can snipe Gallifrey and so on it was kind of funny funny banter or drama or whatever you want to call it are we just gonna go with the anchor again I don't have the armaments so it's very likely that yeah I, I want to go with Angkor it's very likely that he would ban my Jatsis. Now I think he's probably gonna ban the Angora, but... I mean, he could go with UDK ban, but I kind of feel like he's not gonna do it. What? Rotos ban? That's kind of weird. Out of all of the champions in my team, like Jatsis or Rotos, I would have been most happy if he would ban them. I, I didn't expect that. Anyway, like what I was saying, that after three years of CBC, people obviously are not as hardcore about it as they used to be, or that's what I thought, but now we had the crazy matchup with 180 million points. But generally, people definitely care about it much, much less than they used to. And I'm sure, in big part, to do with it. Not only is, you know, stone skin accessories the new meta, but people have a lot of reaction and they've had those ego battles before with other clans, likely. <laughs> Maybe not every time, since TNL and IPR had not faced, but generally they have faced each other many times, so people have kind of gotten over it. I, I was over it the day that it was announced, so... <laughs> I've always been not a big fan of CVC, and I'm much more looking forward for the sieges than, than the normal sieges. I wish they would call it something else, because sieges is CVC, and CVC is something else, but it's not it's not actually clan versus clan. <laughs> Feel free to disagree in comments. I think we're kind of good. I just need to get some actual cooldowns back on Narciss and I think it can be over pretty fast. As long as I can get that. Yeah, I think even with the Harma passive we're probably gonna kill the Sifi. Okay, not quite, okay. But it's basically over. I can kill the Sifi with A1 now, and I have a double reviver, so I don't think his nukers are instantly gonna one-shot me, and we still have the UDK, so... What should I do? Should I risk it for A1? If, if I get A1 Brock here, it will be super good, but I think, yeah, we're gonna go for the shield. Nice, we had resist. My UDK doesn't have high resistance, it's like only 400 or something like that. Usually he actually gets polymorphed and I have been thinking about increasing it actually. Wait, didn't he just use the revive on Harima? Wait, no, no, Yumeko just took a turn. 
I'm being dumb. Yeah, we have to go for a CT. It is kind of tanky CT. This is not a super squeezy one, and we are getting locked out on Harima passive, so even though his team is not ultra tanky, it's still not an easy one shot. Ankara is the A1 on Ankara is so OP, but it's super RNG. Like, do you get it or not? But like, very often if you just get it, it's a literal win condition. Like all the time, not not like once in a new moon. But like, if I broke it now, Sifi would have died, and probably Arima, maybe everybody on his team would have died. But multiple members would have died if I got the A1 proc, and it's a 50-50. And now that I didn't, it's kind of looking a little bit bad. It's kind of. Uh, a massive deal actually. Can we get it now? No, okay. A little bit unlucky. Okay, thank god I went before Harima. If I didn't then it was looking kind of bad. He still has the Wukong, so we don't really want to like underestimate him because Wukong could one-shot my entire team on any one turn. But we are kind of tanky and we still have two revives, so I hope we are good. Should I do the shield or should I... Um I might almost kill the Harmo with A1, okay. If that was a crit, it would have died. Oh, okay, okay. We're good now. A little bit slow-winded, but kind of... Uh, Predictable matchup, it definitely could have gone either way, but I was kind of expecting to win. Okay, so we're 2 1. We lost the first battle, of course, but now we're doing a bit better. I think I need to use Mikage more in those battles to where I get Armands, but. I haven't been using her that much lately. Even though I think Mikage is super good, but it's so massive deal if you go first or not. And I don't have anything super threatening that they need to ban if I don't get Armands. <laughs> That's the only one that I got. And in that situation, if I just pick one Reviver, they're pretty much always gonna ban my only Reviver. And if I don't pick UDK, they, they pick it. So I'm pretty much always going with Double Reviver and UDK if I'm the second pick. And even otherwise, but especially if I'm the second pick. Okay, he went with Wukong, but we don't even know if that's Wook Nukong. It Wook Nukong. <laughs> if it's a Nuke Wukong, it could be a support one. It is with Polymorph and he's going with Armand, so it totally could be a support too and, and not a Nuker. So, but I guess we're yeah, I guess we're still gonna go with it. If it's a support, support Wukong though, that means that he can't pick Sifi. Okay, he got Galatir. So it's a no Wukong. I was gonna say that he wouldn't have immunity. Galatir has immunity. And Mikage could be good against him, but maybe we are still gonna pick Mikage. I'm thinking either Mikage or Wukong actually in this one. 
Uh, not, not Wukong, I mean Necrot, Necrot. He obviously has the Wukong. Let's go with Mikage, okay. Yeah, and predictably, like I said, <laughs> I don't have anything else that is scary to bang, so if I don't have Armands and I pick one Reviver, they are almost always gonna ban it. But maybe we can get some threats with the fast Mikage. <laughs> or not. Is he gonna buff strip the stone skin? Ah! Rodos lost the stone skin, we were super unlucky there. And Yurike, Bo both of them lost stone skin. Oh, okay. Uh, we, we can get a stun from Mikake. Almost tempted to do ally attack though. Let's do the ally attack. I don't know if I'm gonna regret this. We're, st we're still gonna have the stun for later. And now we, now we have attack buff on Rodos, so... He would do a lot more than he otherwise would. Okay, okay. Damn, that, that battle seems super scary, but actually... Actually, it was pretty smooth. By the way, here's one thing that is a little bit um, maybe uncommon knowledge. I think probably most people know and they might have forgotten about it, but they know. But as you could see in that battle, the Wukong was polymorphed and I did the double hit and it killed it. So if you do multi hit against the polymorph and it dies, the rest of the hits that are left over, they will still go to the main target. It, it can be sometimes kind of relevant, especially when I used to do the Wukong init the strategy in Classic Arena, that was very relevant because I could kill the Polymorph with the init the A2, and still, because it's a triple hitter, I could still also block revive the target, possibly, if it's not super tanky. Again, not, not Taras or Marichka, but others. Okay, I don't think we got anything good at all here. Maybe maybe if I get like a triple or a quad on the shield, I might consider Chaos Oring it, but probably not. There's bigger priorities. I, I think the two piece sets for Nukers are a little bit out of the meta and flavor. Even Cruelty set, which is insanely good set generally. But four piece stone skin and lethal combo or 9-piece variable sets, those are kind of taking over and I feel honestly generally better than having like 4-piece lethal or stone skin and 2-piece cruelty. Of course, I guess if you really just want to go for max damage and your cha champion is tanky or you go first or something like that, you could go with um, like 3-piece um, slayer or like um, Merciless on accessories, and then 4-piece lethal and 2-piece cruel. That could technically be the most damage, but that's very niche. Usually you still want to have reaction or stone skin, and stone skin is generally basically always be better than reaction anyway, so... But that could be very good in some situations. Okay, he took my both of my nukers instantly. <laughs> this is not a super fun matchup, but... Let's go with uh, UDK and Angora to try to mitigate this as much as possible. But let's say I have like Harima and I just pick UDK and Harima here. He would be screwed. This would be super, super easy battle to me at this point. My team would be so tanky if I go with Toast. There's not much he can do about it. But Harima is always eluding me. It's gonna be a massive celebration. <laughs> celebration when I get Harima. I, I I literally have like I don't know, champagne on the on the stream or something like that. 
I, I, I'll make a, I'll make that happen for sure. I'm, I'm not even kidding. I'm literally gonna pop, pop up champagne if I ever pull Harima from shards, or my own account, of course. Um. So I, I guess we don't have too many options left. Are we gonna go with Xena and Staldos? That's that's pretty much what I got. I don't think Heliot is gonna work against the uh, Wukong and Rotos, so we're gonna go with this. I wonder if that's Nuke Wukong or support one. What? I guess Lazarus doubles down as support, and Wukong could be support too, but we're super confused here. Does he have two nukers, three nukers, four nukers? It could be any number of them, honestly. Uh, I'm definitely gonna... Hmm, I don't even know. I feel like I'm gonna go for either Lazarus or Wukong, but let's go for Lazarus ban. I could have maybe gone for a CV too, but we do have the Xena, so maybe, maybe not. Come on, Xena, show what you can do. Y you can take care of this battle. Yeah, he doesn't have anybody in stone skin. That's a little bit unexpected. If if he just lets my Xena cut, okay, <laughs> he's he's not gonna use the CV turn meter boost. Okay, th thank God, at least. Xena kept the stone skin, even though um, Ankara lost it. And we can't really do the shield now because we're gonna take the double hit. Even though I, I want to remove the block pass step off, but we can't do it. Damn. Third meter boost OP. You know, my ogres are fast, but you know, they're still going before me, all of them. <laughs> And the Wukong is in stone skin, so that's a problem. Wait. Well, let's go with the A3. The A2 does a little bit less... Oh. <laughs> See if he got counter attack from Mastery, and UDK froze him. I was actually kind of waiting to get the... Oh. Oh, okay, it got removed. Does he have cleanse accessories? I think he must have, like, cleanse accessories. I don't think that should happen otherwise. Also, do I want to do the A3 or A2? I feel like I need to do A2 because I don't want to proc extra. Wait, it doesn't matter. We have the UDK. Okay, let's do A3. Can we got in with Xena now? He did. She did get the turn meter boost. No. Okay. I was kind of expecting Xena to go before the style was honestly after... After the CV turn meter boost. As long as we go before Wukong. Come on. Please, please let me go before this Wukong. Then we're good. No, no, I, okay. Now we're gonna get... Um, do I want to do the AOE? I think I have to go for A1 on the CV. I don't want to give Rodos extra turn. We, we have to kill the CV, yeah. Yeah, okay, now it's better. We at least got the Stalus back up. Yeah, if I did the AoE nuke now, the Rotos would have just killed the Angora and Xena, and w w UDK was polymorphed, so that would have been the end of the battle. Wait, wait, I could have done A2 there. I didn't even need to do the A3. That was a slight mistake, but maybe weak it. Okay, not weak it. Did I lose it? I thought I was good. Okay, okay, barely survived. Oh. And now Wukong is... Uh, the Rotos is back to more than 50% health, but okay, we, we have the A1, so we're good. It was kind of scary, but I think we got this. No, <laughs> we're not doing enough damage. Please don't get stunned, please don't get stunned. If he has Polymorph or stun, we are screwed. Okay, no, oh, okay. It's gonna be another factor. Do we get weak it? No weak it? Okay, okay. We, we still had a couple turns because it was not the new Wukong, so... 
it wouldn't have one shot us anyway but okay that that was kind of close one but you know it is what it is let me just quickly show you because it might seem like uh obviously my xena doesn't have the best gear in the game or anything like that and i lost a little bit damage for the gear but it's not like my xena is in a terrible gear i guess she is rocking five star amulet which is kind of unoptimal and this um weapon doesn't have crit damage which kind of sucks but i mean the other gear is is pretty good i need to Chaos does this helmet, but it used to be on my Rotos, so I need to fix that. But otherwise, I mean, it's not like a terrible gear on Xena or anything like that. Oh yeah, <laughs> I I got even better helmet on Rotos. I was considering, I was thinking like, why did I, why did I remove that helmet from Rotos when, when this one is so good? But okay, I I I got the, I got the even better piece for him. I think this was a couple of months ago, I, I kind of forgot about it. Maybe like um, four months ago or something like that. But okay, we, we barely won it. Now we're actually one loss and four wins, so doing pretty okay. Not... Oh, I could have used the token. Well, we're going to use all of it anyway. Not like this is going to last this kind of win ratio, but we'll take it. Whatever I can get, I'll take it, and when I pull the Harima, we're gonna pop champagne, that, that's a promise. <laughs> and I'm probably gonna make a fool, fool out of myself when I when I try to do it, but it, it is what it is. Not, not something that I really, you know, <laughs> thought about before, but now, uh, now that I'm thinking about it, I, I should do it, and I, I think I have one unopened champagne in my uh, storage, so we're good. Okay, I I'll make it even better. If I pull Harima, not only am I gonna pop champagne, but I'm gonna I'm gonna drink the entire champagne bottle on, on the video or something like that. <laughs> we we can make it a fun challenge. I can, I, can, I can go for that far because, you know, I so I want to get Harima so badly. <laughs> it would be so big deal. Live Arena would be so much more fun than all of the other Arena game modes too, if, if I had her. But for now we're just daydreaming and we'll see if it ever happens. Probably... <laughs> Probably by the time that I get Harima, there's, a, there's finally something that actually counters her and she's not relevant anymore. Th that would be kind of sad. I, I hope that doesn't happen, actually. Marius? I really wish I had Mord. Mord would be super good against not just Galatir, but Marius. I really struggle against him. Do I want to pick Xena or Stalos? I think we're gonna go with Xena. I mean, we have the Darces, so let's go with Xena. But I'm gonna go with Narcissus Ban. That, that's, you know, that's already decided. No matter if he picks Galatir or Grixia or whoever, I have the Bolster Darces, so I, I have to ban the Narcissus in, in this matchup. Okay, stole a little bit <laughs> turn meter from um, Yumeko, but that actually gets the counter attack, so I need to be careful with that. But we actually got some damage in before the Yumeko lockout because of uh, 
Xena, so th that's kind of good. Mm. If I go for Ankara now, Ankara is gonna get the shield before I kill her, so we had to go for the Necrot first. Oh, it got polymorphed. Uh, okay, well. Maybe I should have gone for <laughs> Angor after all, I guess. And if, if I kill the Yumeko now, Angor is gonna revive her with the cooldown, so it's kind of risk. Ah, another Enfeeble. Both of my Nukers have Enfeeble. Okay, can we get extra turn? No? Okay. So, uh, even though his Nukers are polymorphed, but my nukers are basically polymorphed as well, and they're gonna get a lockout again in a second, so... I hope I can get like... One turn in with them, but maybe I can't. Okay, Angora, Angora got uh, frozen because of her passive, and because of the... Like, um... The sheeps hitting me, so... Wait, wait, it's over already. Okay, we're good. It's, it's game over. I, I think we got this. Yeah. Okay, nice. Five battle win streak. We'll take it. F finally, things are going in my favor. Xena, Xena even got couple, couple battles and hundred percent win ratio so far. Yeah, ignore that. I'm just moving Discord tab to another screen, but there was there was nothing private there, so I'm not gonna even remove it from the video. But yeah, pretty nice, uh, nice way to chill. Actually, getting some wins and some peace of mind on uh, on Sunday. I'm gonna post this video on today, I'm actually not recording this on morning, but on the day library in a time slot, so this video is gonna be up a bit late, and I'm already gonna have my stream up probably, <laughs> probably by the time that you see this, if you're from Europe, but gonna post it anyway. Y usually I put my videos out a little bit earlier than this one. I don't think we really want to go for the Duchess. He already big three supports. Let's go. Let's go with Rotos and Mika again. And I could even do something weird here and pick a turret Nuker, depending what he picks. Helicat might even be an option here, but maybe even Xena too, because she happens to be in the Stone Skin, even though CV doesn't have to use the turn meter boost. And Shushen could just give a turn to the Nuker, but Xena is not gonna get one shot unless it's George it or Batalis or something like that. So it, it might be an option. C can't wait to get the Polymorph on my Narsus, but I think at the earliest, I think I still need like 100. 10 tier 3 tokens or something like that, so it's gonna be at the end of the year, assuming that I get lucky and I see the 6 star soul in the slot shop as like fast as possible after I have the means to buy it. Okay, he went with the Georgit. We are gonna ban the Armands of course. Should I just go with UDK? Kind of, kind of feeling going UDK here. Yeah, yeah.
the thing is that even if I have my Helicat in Stone Skin, but obviously he can die through that too from Charged, and even if he got the weak hit it with the reaction proc, he would still die, I think. And he has both Jewel Gen and CV, so there's no way Charged is not gonna go before anybody in my team. And we even lost the speed aura. Then again, this guy is 4.9k. Hopefully, hopefully I have a lot of better gear than him and he just doesn't have the means to actually kill me. Okay, nice. Reaction prox. And what now? Everybody is protected, so... Uh, I think we're gonna go for a ally attack on the CV. Yeah. Let's get the attack buff on Rotos and maybe he can do a little bit more damage. Oh, see, he almost died to it. I was not expecting it to be that close. Nice. If I can just get a turn now, I'll kill the CV and... George it next, it might even go my way actually. Okay, we're good. I don't think I don't think we can lose it here. Even with the defense buff. Surely my Rotos has enough damage to kill the George it. Yeah. 87 game, not not even close. Nice, this is an endless endless win streak. <laughs> but we're we're gonna we are gonna save the champagne for Harriman. Not not for a random win streak against the uh, guys at my rating. It's not like we're meeting enemies that are like 20k points, like I often do. Most of these people have been like around my rating or even lower than me, so don't want to get too happy about this. And we can we can even see from the champions that obviously they have kind of good champions, but it's not um it's not full mythic that we often see, and there's only like one Galatir in all of the teams that we met. We didn't even face a single Grixia yet. The, there was one Lazarius, I guess I banned the Lazarius, but this is not the worst. <laughs> worst team in teams in gold for not even close to it. Okay. <laughs> How weak a loss streak are we gonna get after after this ends? Wait, how is TP so low points? I guess he doesn't doesn't play out of Wyvern, I guess. E even though he's low points, but I'm sure you know he has good champions, so it's not gonna be an easy battle. Yeah, oh, come on, we we got to win this, can? We can we keep the win streak up, even against adversity? <sighs> By the way, th this, we have talked about this on a couple recent videos, but you see the battle rules in the bottom right corner? Every champion picked for battle must be unique. Can we get new battle rules? Can we get seasonal rules, tournaments? Where is all of the updates in Live Arena? I feel like they released the raw form and the beta version of Live Arena. And it it is missing all of the things that are supposed to be in it. If we had like events and tournaments and seasonal battle rules, this could sp spice things up and make it a lot, make it a lot more interesting. Okay, Yumeko and Sifi, it's not that bad, it could be way worse. First of all, I know TP likes to use Rotos, but we can we can pick the Rotos now without worrying about the consequences. Even if he has R-Base, he can't pick it since 
he didn't take any no cards. What else do I want to pick? Something that is good against Loka. Should we just go, I think, either Duchess or Mikage now? And then I still have one big that I can decide after I see his nukers. I think we're gonna go with Duchess. We are gonna get locked out and we need to survive a little bit, so we want to have at least one reviver in the team. Okay, do, do your worst TP. Let's see what you got. Gismark and... Marius. That's very painful, but they both rely on Debas. If we can just get lucky here, then we it's totally winnable. I think either Mikake or... Um, no, no, let's go with Wukong. Yeah, yeah, either one of these two. They both have Polymorph, but obviously when Mikake swaps forms, we're gonna take even more Marius attacks, which might be good if we get the Enfeeble, the Brock Polymorph, but let's just go with Wukong. That way we will have a triple Polymorph in the team, which might work out very well against the setup that he's running. Ah, okay, didn't get didn't get Gizmark at the start Polymorph, kind of unfortunate considering that we have three champions with Polymorph, there was pretty good chance for it to happen. Ah, and even Marius didn't get Polymorph. Now it's starting to look pretty bad for us. Hmm. And we are locked out, so we're not going to do anything for a while. We don't have the Angora either, so we can get Aridanji A1 box. Uh, I'm getting Polymorphed and not him. <laughs> that sucks. This is not the way that this was supposed to go. Okay, do we have enough damage to kill the Sifi? I don't think so, but maybe if we get... Good uh, damage procs. Come on, you can do it. Kill Sivi. Nah. She did have defense buff, but I think that probably was without the Helm Smasher proc. Uh, I, I, we lost it. We lost it. I don't think we can survive for the next Duchess turn. Oh, we're getting we're getting Mario's passive procs from the Wukong passive too. I, Totally forgot about that. Wait, we are not? This time it didn't proc it. I, I guess it wasn't from it. I thought it was. Uh, I wanna stun the Marius, but Sifi is gonna sleep us. Let's let's go for Sifi. Okay. Wait, ah. Uh, I have the hex on. You make a hex on me anyway. Forgot about it. Okay. We lost. Marius is really hard matchup for me just in general but this fight could have easily just if we just proc polymorph at the start it it would have been the opposite and i would have like would have killed him without any losses if i i was lucky but too bad there there goes the win streak it's still gonna be a while for me to get marius there there was some setbacks and I, I switched clans like two times during the M Marius missions and both of the times it basically <laughs> it was the worst possible time and like I had to wait like one week that I can do mission and then I can do like one or two more missions and I need to wait another week so I was getting time gated super hard. This guy is pretty high points I mean he's 8000 points but then he does has does have this avatar. I'm not sure what tier is it from. I have never seen it before, so I think it's from one of the lower seeds tiers. Meaning that his clan is not super 
high level, which, which is kind of weird because he's 8,000 points, but maybe he's uh, a doable matchup. Is he, so he has both Harima and our base, is not good for us. And, and do I want to go with Dutchess? I kind of don't against the Narcissus, but then again, I really want to get the Polymorph against our base and Harima. I think we're gonna, gonna go with the Dutchess. Probably I'm gonna ban the Nar Narcissus, we'll, we'll see about it. Yeah, I, I wish I could switch my UDK for Necrot now, since he has our base anyway, and UDK isn't as necessary to me. Xena kind of needs the protection. Okay, ah, this is a hard one. I think we still have to go for the Narcissus plan, sadly. Looks kind of impossible at this point. Sucks to suck. What, what can I say? Playing against lockout without any mythicals is not is not very fair or feasible. Okay, at least we got one turn in on Xena before we get locked out because of the turn meter boost we got from our base, but with the Harima passive we obviously can't kill anybody or anything like that. Yeah, not even close. See if he's back to full health already. But at least I got like 10% um, more attack from the Xena passive, but I don't think like this battle would need to last for very long for that that part of the passive to be relevant. Because we are obviously locked out and we are getting like one turn every like, I don't know, 15 turn that his Harima takes because you know we are like locked out and we are not able to use skills. And we also get the turn meter, turn meter reduction from Warlord and he gets a turn meter boost and speed buffs from the city and R base. So the Tarima is literally gonna do like 15 abilities for one ability that my my Xena does. Maybe we could... Oh, <laughs> I was just gonna say, maybe we could get our base Polymorph. That's kind of one Aguilas heal on her, that she boosts the decrease speed on the passive when you attack her, and sometimes it can backfire and actually be beneficial to us. That's why I like to spam A1 on Rotos against our base, because I do have the 6-star Blessing and Polymorph on him, so he can sometimes deal with our base that way, but it's not very reliable method to do it, do it, of course. But okay, we're still alive 3 minutes in, but the issue here is that we don't even know if we're ever gonna pull off a revive on Duchess because of the lockout, so we can't really count on getting any, any revives at all in this battle. My Duchess is like, I think, 277 speed or something like that. It's not really enough to get your abilities back against the Warlord and uh, Sifi. Ne never mind the turn meter boost from our base. So, I think we can kill Sifi now. I think this is gonna do it. Yeah, good. I don't think I have the damage to kill that Warlord through the shield and defense buff. I should probably risk it and see. Maybe we don't weak it against the R base. <laughs> it barely survived, but then it got polymorphed. That that was kind of a 
very weird turn of events. Okay, at this point, Harima lost the defense buff. Maybe we should just focus on it. Nah, no, I, I need to kill the R base. I, I can't let it... Um, no, okay, let's go for Warlord now. I feel like I'm... No, it's too tanky. Let's go R base. I can't... No. I can't let the R base get the stone skin and everything up. No, the polymorph keeps saving her. <laughs> now now the polymorph is back backfiring for me. She's like 500 health and then she gets polymorphed twice in that situation. And I, I can't do big damage because of the Harma passive, but I desperately want to finish off the um, R base. Maybe I should have just hit the wall or there. Or even Harima at this point when it lost the shield. It doesn't have the defense buff and shield. I I I feel like it doesn't kill it. Even if I weak it, I think it's gonna barely survive this, but I think we're gonna go for the warlord. Okay, barely enough to kill it, nice. <laughs> yeah. Harima wouldn't have died. The thing is that the A2 was gonna do a lot more damage than the A3 did. So if I did the A3 on Harima. She definitely wouldn't have died to it, but now we're good. Very close one, because I don't think I would have been able to pull off the revive at all on Duchess, but somehow Rotos made it. What's the record now? Okay, so 9 battle loss, 2 losses, 7 wins. Let's get another 6 battle win streak. Raid Reddit seems kind of boring today. There's not really anything um, interesting going on. Um, Armands are with their Wukong. I don't usually see that combination, but Armand's is obviously the <laughs> first pick in 99% of battles. But yeah, it's painful when they can get both Armand's and Lockout Champions. You basically can't do anything against that unless you go first or you get Polymorph Rock or something like that. Is that a support Wukong or a noob Wukong? Hmm. Jamal becoming obsolete for endgame Hydra. Well, it depends what you call endgame. Doing like a couple billion damage is um well it depends it depends what you're talking about. I don't consider like a couple billion damage on one key endgame and obviously no endgame team is gonna use Shamile, but for normal people Shamile is still pretty good of course. But there's a lot of um new stuff on Hydra, so Shamile and Ugo and those kind of champions are becoming a little uh, less used. Are we still gonna go with the Duchess? I mean, not, not Duchess, I mean the UDK. I, I, yeah, I think we're just gonna go with it, but that might actually... My prediction is that that's not an Ogre. Oh, it, it is an Ogre. Interesting. And he, of course, had R base, so UDK doesn't 
really like I guess it helps like against Wukong a little bit if he doesn't have accuracy, but considering that he's plus two with six star blessing, he probably has. And he was able to pick the R base anyway. At least we got the Galatir ban, so maybe we can do something here and everybody in his team is prone to polymorph. But you know, the big boy Hydra teams, they are doing like <laughs> trillions of damage or whatever, so you, you can forget about Shamel or any keys that do a couple billion damage. At this point, many people can do auto teams that do many billions of damage, so it has gone up for but of course for normal people doing doing one billion damage with one key is pretty good. Damn, I feel like it's over already. We didn't get locked out, he got polymorphed, I got turned on Narcissus, like his team isn't that tanky. Mikage might even die to this. Okay, not, but they're low HP now and we're gonna get things done. He doesn't even have any real revive unless we count the passive from, no, not the passive, but the revive on death from our base. Okay, no weak hit. If, if we didn't get that, it would have sealed the deal, but maybe he can still beat us. He didn't get the stone skin extended, so at least we're gonna get a turn sometime soon. This guy is kind of high point, so I'm a little bit surprised this is all that he has. Of course, you know, he has like two good Mythic Champions and Harima, and we banned the Galater, so that's why it looks a little bit weaker. But still, this this is not the worst thing I could meet. Uh, I think we're, yeah, we're just gonna go for the A1s. It's gonna do the same damage as the A3 anyway, and Maybe we get extra turns and polymorph the R base. Okay, that's not good. I was kind of being stingy on the immunity buff. But it, okay, nice. The thing was that both of my new cars had the block buff step buff on them, so only body that could have gotten immunity was Duchess. So I don't know if I really, you know, needed to save it, but. It didn't. Wait, wait. I don't. I think it's kind of close. I'm not sure if I can kill the Harima or not. Okay, I could. Nice. I think we won it. I. The Wukong can still, you know, one shot us, but. Uh, I think we're good. I think we're good. They, they have the block buff step off again. I can never use the dots to say to. Should should have just done a three there. I was I was being um, lazy. Wait, I think we can... Can we block revive the, the Wukong with Rotos? <laughs> Not that it matters, but I think we can... Okay, we can't. I thought we could already block revive it. Anyway, we got the win. Unless Wukong shows... Yeah, an incredible A2 here, but... Looks like he didn't have it. We're going up the moon today. I don't think we can make to 5.7k, but if we continue the way that we 
we have been doing today, I think I can get 5.7k today. Yeah, we started out with like 5,026. We, we could, I guess, still. We have enough time. There's still 40 minutes left. Oh, 9,000 points. Scary. Wait, why is it done? Too, too long thread. Can't, can't go through, through that entire thing on, on a video. Are we gonna meet the Georgie team again? It kind of feels like it's gonna be something like that. Maybe like Lazarus and Georgie just the last two. Dude, should I should I go preemptively? Like I could go UDK Heligat here. It could be good against Charged. But then if he, okay, let's do it. Fuck it. But then if he goes with Lazarus and Charged, it's not gonna be good. But I'm kind of setting setting the Heligat up with the UDK. That's why I'm picking it. And to be honest, I mean this guy, I'm sure has good champions. So we probably have to go for a hail mary and see if we can pull out some cheese against him but if we get the UDK and Helicat he won't be able to one shot the Helicat on the first turn I mean he could of course just ban one of them but if he doesn't then we will get the block damage up Aphidius and Gizmog, interesting Should I go with Wukong just to get more Polymorph? Or Datsus? I think we're just gonna go with Datsus actually. One of them of course. Yeah, let's let's get the second Reviver in, in the team. Okay, today is like the clan boss day on Reddit, but I'm not the clan boss expert. Ask somebody else about that. Okay, again no polymorph. I feel like Gizmark, it's so easy to polymorph Gizmark on the first turn of the battle, but both of the Gizmarks that we got today, we didn't get them with the polymorph. Can, can we at least get the Aphidius? Come on. Aphidius depths are super... Okay, he, okay, he didn't do... Are super annoying to deal with, but he can also get very easily polymorphed. His nukers are moving like 15 times before I get a single turn in the entire battle. And Narciss has the lockout, so he can't really do his abilities. So he doesn't have revivers, so we could just kill the Aphidius and. Maybe we can get turns later. I mean, he's lapping me way too hard, though. He has both turn meter reduction and uh, increase and speed buff and then the extra turns. Yeah. And now, now we can't do we can't kill anybody because of the taunt and the ally protection. Okay, this is a bit annoying. 
it, it's it's always what happens that I I literally lose battles without ever getting a single turn against the enemies. That that's what the game has come down to. If I can get turns, then I can I can probably kill them. But often when I lose, I don't even ever get a single turn against them. But okay, now I feel a little bit unlucky. Like, come on, we could we could have gotten many many polymorph procs at this point. I feel a little bit bad about this. We only have Justice though, but even still, like, we took so many different debuffs. Give me at least one polymorph proc on somebody. And imagine if I had everybody in, in 6 star polymorph, he literally could not run this team and use this kind of, uh, I don't know what you call it. OP strategies, maybe not OP, but against me it is OP. If I had Polymorph, it would not be that way, but yeah, okay, we got Block Revive, we're done. Yeah, it, it was winnable, but we needed those Polymorph procs. That's the only way to win against that without going first. One one Gods and Legends players was um, asking in the video I did with IPR why did I not <laughs> invite them on my video? I mean, I didn't, but I'm not. You know, they, these people hate me. They have this um, they have this one guy that is a moderator, and he used to be a big hater of my good friend Rats, and they used to like battle every day, and you know. Rats was, Rats was super good in arena and obviously destroyed that guy, Ethan. He, he was doing arena at that time. I don't think he does arena anymore, but he, he was like, um, sometimes he could finish top 20, but it's not like he was really competing with Rats. But he was always um, arguing with Rats on Discord. This is like years ago, like three years ago. And I used to be friendly with everybody in GNL, but then they hated Rat so much that eventually, like every single um, every single player from GNL, pretty much apart from couple that hide it, that they're friends with me. But every player from GNL hates me because uh, one guy hates me because he he hates my friend who he lost to in arena and like had trash talk. So it's a weird weird thing, but that's literally it and. I don't see GNL players that often in live arena. I feel like they used to be active in arena like three years ago, but they are not super active. I don't meet them very often. They definitely have players that do arena, but I think a couple of them, well, I mean, it happens with all of the clans, but I think a couple of their main arena players, they either quit the game or joined IPR or, or MAD and so on, and they don't really have a big arena presence anymore. But yeah, let's just, let's just say that I'm not the biggest friends with them. And the funny thing is like, you know, so th these guys like, they talk about me like literally every day. And sometimes people send me like pictures about it and so on. And every time, um, every time somebody leaves their clan, let's see if he goes with the UDK, but I'll go with Wukong. But every time somebody leaves GNL, <laughs> they go to like apology tour to me, even if I don't know them and I have never spoken with them and so on. But every player that leaves this clan, they become super friendly with me and <laughs> apologize for everything afterwards. It's a weird, weird thing, but they really, really dislike me in, in this clan. Anyway, no, nothing against this guy. I, I have no idea who he is. And I don't know if he if he just talks me or the, just talks me or not. But yeah. Now, now, now you know. There was a couple of people asking, asking me about the, what that one guy said in my um, IBR GNL CVC video. What do we even want to be here? I don't think I... Let's go with Necrot. I don't think UDK is gonna save me against Eva. It's gonna hit so hard. Can the ally protection save me? Maybe. Maybe, I don't think so, but maybe, probably not. 
I think he's just gonna... I have one nuker now, he banned the other one. And I, yeah, I don't think my... My Narciss can take a hit. He has high HP and he's protected, but Eva hits insanely hard. You can do like 200 uh, K damage per hit on her nuke. It's basically impossible to survive. Even though she's not super popular, but she does hit really hard with that one skill. Okay, he went for... Kind of wasted it. Pretty sure he... Yeah, he used it. I guess he brought uh, reaction, so we're good. For now. <laughs> we're gonna get the whale up and yeah, maybe we can do something. Thing is that he has shields, so... My Narcissus is obviously gonna decimate him. I could even... Um, actually, this might be the smart thing to do. I could just block revive the Eva instantly. <laughs> and let it taste its own medicine. And we don't have to worry about the Eva later. Okay, I, th I think we're good. Anyway, nothing personal. I I don't know this guy. It could be somebody that, <laughs> that talks about me a lot and hates me. But I have no idea. So, n nothing against him per se. But... His clan, not not a big friend with them. They kind of had, you know, this is a long time ago, okay. I might as well tell it since, you know, I don't like them. They talk about me every day, so I can talk about them too. But uh, years ago when I was looking, I can, this is this is true story, by the way. This We literally weighed these options. But years ago, when me and Rats, we wanted to, wanted to join one of the top arena clans, and we were thinking about the options, we never even considered GNL. I mean, we talked about it, but uh, in regards to the clans to join, at that time, GNL was considered one of the top arena clans. <laughs> but we both ruled out GNL instantly because they have. It's a little bit different these days than it used to be back in those days, but GNL used to be known as a clan that was, you know, super egoistic and they were, you know, they were a really strong clan back then. And they were all always you know super high and mighty and egoistic there's some super fun guys there too there's some people couple people that i really like from gnl not not to put like a broad brush on everybody but they they had a bad reputation back then too but for a different reason which is kind of you know ironic because obviously mad has kind of bad reputation too but between those options it was a no-brainer that we definitely never even considered joining GNL. We didn't even apply to it or talk about it with them. Okay, let's see what we... Here's an, another interesting... Gallogen, I don't think he's mod anymore. I don't know why, but Gallogen, Gallogen used to be one of the moderators in Raid. Interesting uh, knowledge. Maybe he's mod, but I feel like I saw that he wasn't mod a while ago. This guy I'm very friendly with. Not like I talk with him every day, but... <laughs> no, not not like Gia now. I, I'm very friendly with this guy. Let's see if I'm getting any messages. No, no nobody sent... You know, sometimes I get, like, everybody that I battle messages me, and sometimes nobody does. It's very inconsistent. Okay, what can we pick against Gal again? I feel like um, Wukong could be good here for multiple reasons, but I probably need to have a reviver. I don't think I can I can pick Wukong anymore. If I didn't pick the UDK, maybe I could have gone without UDK with Wukong, but it's too late. I think we'll go with Duchess instead of Ankara for the polymorph though. Yeah. I guess it's actually not very very complicated decision at all what I want to pick. Okay, Harimapan.
Yeah, I, I think Harmo, yeah. Okay, we lost to TP though, so can can we avenge that battle? I kind of want to. This is the second second battle today that we have against Mad, and we lost the first one. So I kind of want to get even. Okay, come on, Iron Chi Jesus, bless me with Helm Smasher proc. We really need it. It looks like a very tanky Sifi. I think we can still kill it if we get the proc, but definitely not even close without. Okay, we got the proc. Thank you, thank you, Almighty RNG Jesus. Thank you for this. <laughs> maybe, maybe we can get get a revenge. Um, I probably should risk the weak hits on Mikake. I there's no direct revive, so if I can get the Mikake off the battle, it's gonna look a lot. Oh no, we can we can even block revive the Mikake. I think I think we're we're good. <laughs> he's done. He's done. We'll see about that. But I feel like I feel like we're in super good position now. I could basically kill the Taras and take my time in killing it and try to get the best opportunity that maybe I can kill the Maritska with the A3 and so on. Uh, I'm gonna reduce my attack if I hit Taras, but it doesn't matter on Rotos. We, we have enough damage, I think. Yeah, I don't think I want the. Yeah, I, I don't want to actually nuke them now. I could easily kill both of them, but Rotos is not high enough turn meter. See if he would cut in before my Rotos, so we actually can't do it. With UDK and him having, only having two champions, not getting that crazy amount of password the passive, I think we can just play safe and. Uh, wait, actually, now I could do it, probably. Yeah, now I could... Yeah, now... Okay, I don't... Yeah, now we can just go for Mariska. I don't have to stall that long. Whoa! Not enough damage to kill it, okay. Then we are gonna stall a bit more. If I killed Mariska there now, we could kill a Sifi on the next turn, and or on the same turn, and it would be done. But now I'm gonna wait to kill Mariska a little bit, until I get the Rotos. Um, Rotos... A3 back. Damn. <laughs> Little bit risky now though, because um, if I revive Rotos, UDK is gonna um, die very soon. It's not gonna keep up, but we have to go for the Rotos, I think. Yeah, we're, we're gonna get the revive back anyway, so. But I don't really want to screw this up, up at this point. Like now I can't kill the Marit Scar, I can't hit it because Rodos is gonna get stunned. And again, if Rodos was just a little bit more turn meter, I could kill both of them now. But see if he's gonna get the revive if I if I do it. It's gonna move before Rodos. Taras and Merit card that OP that even in 2 versus 4 they are kind of giving me a little bit headache. Okay, now we can do it. Now we can do it. Uh, Rodos is gonna get the turn before Sifi. Now we can go for it. Yeah, okay. Wait, wait, wait. The Sifi is so... I, I don't have damage to kill it. Fuck. Okay. Chains of plans. Uh, what can I do here? I have to go for Taras kill. I wouldn't... Kill the Sifi with the A1, I don't think. Damn. I thought we were good. Wait, what? Okay, what is he doing? That's gonna buy me enough time. I think we're 
we're safe again. Now I'm just gonna kill the Sifi. Hopefully before she uh, revives anybody, and we're we're good. Okay. I think he should have revived Taras, but probably we would have been safe either way. So. Oh, it didn't die. I thought Sifi was for sure gonna die to that. That was definitely not with the proc. Oh, I thought my... Well, it doesn't matter. I thought my Rodos was gonna move now before Sifi, but okay, we're good. <laughs> we took this battle way too seriously. <laughs> Even though we kind of were were pretty safe early on, but okay, nice. We got the, we got our revenge against Kahlo again, or not not personally against him, but we avenged the loss that we had against... Uh, can I find it? No, we... No, no, there it is. We avenged the loss against TP, so... There you go. Galogen was more points too, so we'll take it. Thank you. You know, the arena circles is pretty small, especially on the high up, so a lot of people are gonna know each other, and people of just, you know, different clans and so on. So obviously there's gonna be internal, uh, not internal, I mean there's gonna be drama between different arena players, that's to be granted. Oh, another, okay, I guess it's best out of three, they they weren't happy with me getting getting the revenge, so now they are bringing out the big guns. <laughs> there's no way we can beat Husky, to, to be clear. No, no, not even if I spent like 50,000 in the game, I, that's not going to be enough. Uh, he even got the first pick. But yeah, I mean, it, it's granted that people aren't going to know each other and there's going to be people that dislike each other and so on. I'm not, you know, a super big drama guy, but if like, um, if there is drama, I'm not really one to um, avert it, especially if I feel like the other party is wrong, but generally I get along with everybody and <laughs> I'm not really trying to make dramas with other people, but I'm the North remembers, let's put it that way. I'm I'm not the guy type of guy that gets mad super easily, but I also don't really uh, forget or forgive super easily. I think we'll go with you, DK, yeah. And again, Husky is a nice guy, not, nothing against him, I was more referring to those GNL people. Husky is super cool. Too bad that he only makes content in Russian, so probably most of the people watching this video don't even know that... Um, let me find it. That Husky is one of the biggest content creators in Raid. I issue is that he makes content in Russian, so you don't even, uh, you can't understand. <laughs> I guess he's mostly putting out Dragonair videos right now, though. I'm sure he's making really good He's still doing it, dude, he he has done so many sponsored videos to Dragonair, Ho holy moly. Um, what do I want to pick here? Just Ankara? I guess I'll just go with Ankara. I think so, yeah. Anyway, this is Husky's channel. If you speak Russian, then you probably should check it out. He's a professional shard puller and does make some arena content. I feel like he's, like, as you can see here, he's mostly doing Dragonair videos and shard pool videos, but he does do the occasional uh, arena videos too. I don't think I have beaten him, but I've had so, battle, so many battles that maybe I have. Like, I think I've battled against him a few times, but I'm not exactly sure if we either got the win or not. Okay, let's 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 win this battle, and then it's case closed. That arena enjoys is 
literally the best clan in the game. Come on. I need to do this for the clan. Let's see some polymorph procs on everybody on his team. Like the nukers and Crixia at, at least. No? Okay. No polymorph procs, not the best start. Both Crixia and Lazarus could have gotten polymorphed. And if that happened, we probably would have won at that point. But now it's looking bad. Crixia is for going for a cooldown reset. And we are, we are getting gangbanged super hard by the Tarase or Inuks. I don't think we can, we can take another nuke anymore. Like, even if I reset the cooldowns on Narsus now, I think he's just gonna die before he gets the next turn. Or should I go for... Yeah, let's go for the shield. Yeah, let's do this. I thought my Ankara was locked out, but I think the Krixia got a weak hit against it. Okay, I don't think Narsus can survive this. No way. Oh, he did. Okay, good. He definitely didn't proc. Oh, no. Oh, no. He didn't proc Hamas Masada. Dude, dude. No. No. It was the wrong skill. Uh, okay, this is not that bad. He doesn't have shield anyway. Actually, this is better. Scratch that. This is better. So what happened there is that my Ankara got the counter attack. And with the counter attack, <laughs> she proc the passive. And we got the cooldowns back on Narcissus. Or not the cooldowns back, but the A3 back. And now we actually block revived the... Lazarus, now we have a tiny chance to actually win this battle. Okay, that 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 was a twist of events. I think Aaron G. Jesus decided that today is gonna gonna be a fun day. Okay, it's not over. We're still the underdog, so let's see what happens. He's, he still has a lockout and very strong team, even if Lazarus is out of it, so let's see. Let's not get too... Too happy just yet. Ang Angora is OP. Uh, not Angora. Krixia is OP for a reason. Uh, wait, can we block revive the Krixia? Sifi is so tanky that she might have survived it, so I was playing a little bit safe there. Even if he does the AoE now, he doesn't have enough wasps. My Duchess is gonna survive it. I think we're good, dude. I think we're... I think we're done. It's not over until it's over, but uh, I think it's pretty much over at this point. Okay, there you go. It, case clo closed. I think this uh, official 3, three versus um, 3 out of... Um, best out of 3 tournament decided that Arena Enjoyers is literally better clan than Mad. There's no arguing against it. You, you can say anything you want in the comments, but it's literally proven true. If you want to join the best arena clan, Mad is over. The next new dog is... Uh, the next next uh, next big dog in town is Arena Enjoy, so heat us up if you, if you want to destroy Husky and the others too. <laughs> I'm just kidding, but it was, uh, it was uh, pretty good. We got them. We, we, we had three battles against them. Well... Yeah, against, let's say, big arena clans. I don't know if a um, little bit more trash talk towards GNL, but I don't know if you can really count them as arena clan anymore. They used to, but anyway, we got three wins against the big big boy clans in a row, so that's, um, that's pretty nice. Can we close the video with another win? No, okay, not against this guy. This guy is always super hard battle. I don't think we can beat him. Anyway, nothing nothing can happen anymore that would make me sad. This was a good arena session. Okay, and what now? He got tar he got the narcissist and UDK. He's you know he knows me. He 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 knows how to deal with me. I don't think there's an easy way out of this situation. Should we go with Drotos anyway? Maybe we'll go with, um, yeah, let's go with the Wukong. 
I'm not streaming, so he probably can't hear what I'm saying, but he could pick Wukong too, since he went with the UDK. I'm gonna try my chances with the Wukong and see if we can deal with the UDK that way. Okay, and we'll get more Polymorph against this team, it's kind of needed as well. And last one, Stalus. Helicat? I could almost pick Helicat against this. He can base switch that um, if he picks some, some something with lockout or a buff tip, it's going to be kind of bad because uh, he kind of does it with uh, with uh, Marius. But then I do have Armands in my team, so it complicates it a little bit. And he might he might suspect that my Wukong is Nuka in in this match up anyway, he might not realize that it's a, um, a support book. Okay, he went with Grixia. Thing is that um, Grixia can weak hit against Rotos, but I think I'm still gonna go for the Grixia ban. Yeah. Grixia or Yudika, it's a hard decision. I think we'll go with Grixia. Yeah. Maybe I should open with the uh, Wukong A3 instead of A2. I'm not certain that I can even polymorph the UDK anyway, and we could get the block pass step off on Marius and Harima, meaning that they would do less damage without the defense buff. Of, of course, he could save it for later, but that would also buy me some time, so I might do that. Also, we might steal a storm skin. I think we're gonna. Gonna go with that. Okay, we we stole a stone skin, but we got uh polymorph. I think yeah, I think we're just gonna yeah, we're gonna go with this. We're still gonna use the block damage from the get go. Ah, too bad. Rodos took a turn before his Marius. I was hoping Marius could would go first. He can ob obviously bar strip the block damage, but we're still gonna get the defense buff. So. It's not going to be a total waste. What? Okay. We resisted it. He didn't do the accuracy buff. And accuracy as defense buff. He's saving it until the block debuff ends, I guess. But we lost Angkor. I think it's, yeah, I think it's kind of over. Wukong is polymorphed and we lost Angkor, so... We can't really do much here. It was a good try, but we didn't make it. Like, he, he knew that I can't do anything if I don't have the new girls, and he made the most out of it, so good for him. I think he does this every every time because I've had a couple battles, battles against recently and I think he always picks the Arima and Narciss against me. Okay, okay. Fair enough. We ha we had such a good win streak that we can't get <laughs> get bad against um, that. And I, I knew from the start that we're gonna lose because I think he probably watches my videos or at least he knows my champion pool. If God Co if God is watching the video, then let me know. Damn, we're only meeting like big boys today. There's nobody now at the end that is even remotely close to my rating. I think Husky was like <laughs> three or four times my points. It wasn't even remotely close. He should be like 10 tiers higher than gold 4 or something like that.
Ah, Marius again. Pro probably should have picked Duchess then, but you can't really know what they pick at the start. If they go with Lockout, then Angora is way better. If they go with like Debuffs and the CC, then Duchess is better. Beca be because of the Polymorph, only because of that. Uh... Maybe we will save the Nougar as the last option here. Yeah, let's go with Eligat and Dotsus. Or Mikake. Mi Mikake could buff strip, but he has double death buff anyway. Yeah, let's go with Eligat. He, he can totally counter it, but we do have Angora for our cleanse in team 2. And. Marius is already kind of countering it with the buff reduction, but as long as we are not getting block buff step buff, we will at least still get the defense buff from Helicat, and it's not that pointless. Oh, he picked the Rotos. That dude. I was gonna pick Rotos. I just, I was waiting for him to not have the UDK. Okay. Marius. I mean, not Marius. I mean, um, Xena. Xena or Stalbus. What, what do we want to do? Xena does have stones. Maybe we're gonna go with Xena. I'm not sure which one would be better. <laughs> I don't think Staldus being defense scaling champion would make him a lot more tanky than Xena. Though maybe he could get the weak hit from Rotos, but that's about it. Okay, we got in, but you know. Two of the champions are in stone skin and they have Harima passive and so on, so it's not like we're we're gonna do a lot on this one then that we get. Nah. Come on. Reaction Brock. Nice, okay. We lost a lot of damage though. Rodos doing the A2 on Narcissus is a big deal. Wait. Do I have enough damage to block revive the Rotos? I'm not quite sure because with the Harriman passive and stolen HP, I probably don't. But uh, let's give it a go. Okay, no, not even remotely close. That's how ridiculously like broken Harriman passive is. It's not even a, like, you know, the damage mitigation is insane. That, that wasn't even a skill with ignore defense. We could have easily killed the Rotos otherwise. But okay, we, we lost. Not nothing we can do here. Can't wait to get Marius. That's all I'm gonna say. It's not not only do I not have to face him as much, but more importantly, I will have one more Nuger to play with, and I'm not as easily countered if they. Big Harima or UDK or R base, and I'll have other options. Or if they just, you know, pick multiple of my Nougars, I'm gonna have more Nougars that they can pick all of them. Like right now, they can pick all of my good Nougars. They, they can easily go with both Rodos and Narses. It happened already multiple times today, but with three Nougars, it's a lot harder. I guess ideally, you would really need like four good Nougars. Then you should pretty much always get two of them. But even then you will still want to have every nuker in the game, just so that you can counter whatever the enemy is picking, of course. But four four good nukers would be way better than two, but three good nukers would be a start.
Okay, Quicks, yeah. Yeah, we're gonna go with Narsus and Angor, of course, and probably with Rotos as well, if he lets me. Okay, <laughs> this guy does have a lot of mythic champions. Okay, and what now? Um, Galadriel ban, I think. Okay, Aaron G. Jesus, can we can we get the final battle blessed as well? I really need to get some weak hits from from uh, Grixia to Rotos. Can you let us see that? The weak hit would make a huge difference here. Of course, he could weak hit on Angora too. Okay, he weak hit on Angora, but not Rotos. Not what we wanted, but we'll take anything that we can get. Oh, we did lose the stone skin on. UDK though, that's actually very bad. He might just one-shot me instantly on the uh, Seek front. Seek front can literally one-shot my entire team. If he had attack buff and he gets the Helm Smasher prop, he can still kill the UDK. Oh, he didn't go for the Nuke. Uh, I don't know if I should... Uh, Eat the marriage card or not, because I'm not certain that it's gonna die. And I'm, I don't really want to reduce the... I think we're just gonna proc the Seek from passive. I, I don't want to... Um, reduce the UDK health. It is kind of looking bad though. Uh, can we get the taunt? No? Okay. Okay, now I, now I wish I didn't, um... Okay, actually this is kind of good. It, even though it's not good, but it's kind of good. It forces the Seek from the Switch farm. We could have killed the Seek from now. Oh, the passive procs first, never mind. If we didn't proc the passive, but I think it, this would have played differently if I didn't proc it. If I just did the A1 before, Siegfried wouldn't have rocked the passive, it wouldn't have been enough damage to kill it. Uh, I think we're good, didn't we win? I think, no, oh, sweet parry. Interesting. Can we get the extra turn? No, oh, oh, no, we did. That's game over then, okay. This, I'm still so afraid of the Siegfried, I feel like he could have still ended me on the next turn, but okay. That's it. I don't think we can lose it anymore. That's been an interesting session. We had very... At the start, I think we were meeting... Not even here, but much earlier. We were be meeting, like, um, players that are, like, around the benchmark of reaching gold 4. But in the end, we're only meeting, like, super, super mega cons. We're not even just, you know, like, TP and Pasha here, but we're meeting, like, Husky's account and so on. And this god guy. <laughs> he, he always beats me, but yeah. We, we had very tough enemies and we actually did pretty well. We got some losses in the end. Even though we had, I think, was it 7 battle win streak at the start or something like that. But we were facing really, really tough battles at the end. Well, that's a, that's a good way to um, like uh, end Sunday and prepare for tomorrow's Platbush, so I'm hyped. I don't really have anything new <laughs> new to show on the Monday, but maybe this will give me the, um, I don't know, motivation or encouragement to do well, but that's it. Have a nice weekend and see ya.